Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the filter function to perform lookups. Now this is only available, this new filter function is only available to Microsoft or Office 365 users. Usually when you're thinking about filtering, you're thinking about filtering in a table and you don't really think about it as a lookup function, but it could be used as a lookup function when you put it into a dashboard for your users. You may not want your users to see the whole table, but you want them to be able to put some keywords, let's say for example here, let's say we call this daily, and then the gender will do male, you can bring up the subset of that data, right? So it makes it a little easier for your users to look up information in a bigger table. So let's see how we can do this. So here I am in another sheet and I've got my table of data. I've separated some rows or some records to show examples later on. But for this example, let's look at the filter function. So if I type equal filter, just double click that, you notice that the filter function takes three arguments, two that are required and this if empty, that's optional. So the array is basically our data, right? Data that we want to include when we bring back our records. And I'll choose from A2 to G19. And what do I want to include? So the include is basically which uh, filter do we want to use? So if I wanted to say, let's say that I wanted to use this, I want to say F19. And that one would equal, let's say I just want to look at the data that is just once. Anything that has once in it. Close parentheses, press enter. I'm not going to enter in that, that fourth, that fourth, uh, argument there. If I close parentheses, I'll do that later. Press enter, it's going to bring back just those records that have once in it. Right? So that's the basic example of using the filter function. Let's put the uh, headers here. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And all, you also notice that we probably need to change the formatting there. Just click that and use short date. So that gives us the example here. I'll double click to auto fit here of using the filter function. Now, if we add a new record, let's say, for example, add a new record here, control C to copy. Actually, let's, let's make this one never. We'll make this one never so I can show you this second example. Never, right? And it'll just show one example here, right? So if I move this, take this data, this record, control X to cut, control V to paste, it doesn't show up here. And the reason why it doesn't show up there is because I re need to reset my range, right? And also another thing to keep in, in mind, if I reset my range, I just reset the array and don't reset the include part, it's gonna give me an error. So those need to be equal or the same. So let's change that to 20, right? And so that fixes that. But if we wanted to future proof this, what the best thing to do is turn this into a table. So I can just select anywhere in the range of data, go to insert, and click table. My table does have headers, click OK. And you'll notice that it's turned into a table. It took the default formatting. And if I change this to daily, let's change this one to daily. And it's going to take that later on, but when I add it in there. So I select daily. It's got the four here. But if I add this in, let's say I add a new record, it'll, in, it'll show that in here. Control X to cop, cut. Control V to paste, and now you notice that Tadio Bertel shows up because it's a table. So, so just the best practice here is if you got data in a range and it changes often, you're adding or removing records here, turn it into a table and it makes things a little bit easier. Now with the filter function, you notice that if I click on that cell, that's where the formula is. If I click anything out of it, that formula becomes gray, you see there, because basically what it's doing, it's spilling the formula down into the other cells here. And so that's what these filter function, that's what this filter function does. It's part of a dynamic array function that is new to Office or Microsoft 365. Now another example that I might want to present here is if we don't want to hard code that sort or that filter there uh, for that lookup. And let's put it somewhere else. We'll call this one frequency. Let's put a a uh, little drop down here or an area where you can enter things and we'll call that frequency. Let's make this never, press enter, 
And then instead of having it hard coded for daily, let's just call that cell. So I will call this cell K2, K1, press enter. And now you notice that it's changed it. So if I change this to once, it changes that, right? So that's kind of nice that you can have that there to do that. Now, what if I have more than one condition? In addition to the frequency, I want to do the gender. So I type gender here and let's make that male, right? And I need to have this one changed to also reflect that. The way we can do that is we can put in some other parameters, an and parameter, uh, basically using the multiplication. And the reason why I say multiplication is if you look at the way that the filter function calculates this particular part of the argument is it's going to be trues and falses, either zeros or ones. So let's see how the filter function works. So with this selected, I'm going to look at the formula evaluator. Go to formulas and click on the evaluate formula. And it's going to tell me what the formula is doing. So we have a filter here. So if I evaluate and go through it, it's going to look at this value, K1. Does it equal F2 to F21, that array? If I click on evaluate, you see that it brings back all the values in there and saying that they equal once. And it's going to bring back a bunch of trues and falses. If I click evaluate again, you'll see these falses, falses, and trues. And those basically equate to either zeros or ones. Click evaluate again. And what it's going to do is it's going to see that the first cell there, that equals uh, Douglas here. The first time it goes through those trues and falses, zeros and ones. So it's goes the a, one, a zero is false, a one is true. That's zero, zero, one it's going to bring back Douglas. If I went to the second cell, it's going to bring that back Kenneth. If I close that and go over here and go to evaluate formula, it's going to filter, go through that again. And the second time, it's going to bring back Kenneth, which is that second once, right? That second number one in the trues and falses. So if I click on that, click evaluate, you'll see it goes through that. That's the true that's there. The second time it's going to be a true is there. And it's going to be the same as this row here, right? So if I click evaluate, you'll see it brings back Kenneth, and that's what it's doing. Close this out. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about using this formula because that second argument is basically bringing back trues and falses. So with that in mind, we can look and see if we can create some kind of formula combination that will bring back these two values, once in male. And the way to do that is we are going to multiply these two values, right? So what we're going to do is have that first one look at the frequency that equals K1. And we're going to do on multiplication and look at that second value. So we're going to look at the column here where we're looking at gender. And does that equal to this cell here, K2? But we have to close in these in parentheses. And we can close off the parentheses. I'm going to use the if empty argument, the third argument later on to show you an example of how we can use that. So here, press enter. Now you're going to see that it showed up, right? We have our males that are once. So basically what it's looking for is frequency once and gender equals male. So if I change that to female, it's going to be a different output, right? It's going to be nothing. And because there are no records that have once and female and it's going to give you that calculation error and basically it didn't find anything. So what I can do is use that third argument and say no data. Close quotes, close parentheses, press enter. Now I see no data. If I change this to something like um, uh, daily or, or never, it's going to show two examples, right? So that's how you can bring back records from a table if you wanted uh, more than one criteria, right? Frequency never, gender is female. But what if you wanted it where you want to look at the frequency never or a female. Let's say you wanted your records to have uh, anything that was frequency equals never or frequent, uh, gender equals female. So it's or it's an or situation, right? You wanted the records to either have never or female. So that would just be a plus. So it's going to bring back these two set of data, these two rows, and the other rows where we had it uh, female. So if I press enter. Now the data set becomes a little bit bigger. Remember earlier, it said earlier there was not a male and never. So if I typed in male here, it'll bring back all the data, that, all the records that had male and all the records that had never, right? So I'll go through a couple more examples or some more use cases. Let's say we want to look at duplicate data. I'm going to duplicate this last record here. Control C to copy. 
control V to paste. And now we have this data, right? So it shows up twice here. And I want to find out just for my data set, only things that are duplicate. In this particular data set, uh, usually the emails are unique, right? You can have uh, people that have the same first and last names potentially, but their emails probably are going to be unique. So what I'm going to do here is use that as my criteria. And I'm gonna, let's change this. So here, we're going to go back here. And what we're going to do is look at that particular column. Let's look at this column, right? And we're going to put this into another column, another function called count if. So I'm just going to type count if, open parentheses. You can see that it takes basically two arguments, the range and criteria. In this particular function, I'm going to say if this particular range and count count the criteria, do it again. If that is greater than one, so basically one is unique. If it's more than one, you, there's our duplicates. If that is greater than one, it's going to bring back a bunch of trues and falses, right? So if that's the case, anything that is greater than one, that's a true, and it brings back my duplicate data. And so that's how we can count duplicate data here. Now, if I remove this data here, let's get rid of our duplicate here, press delete. It's going to bring back my calc error. And that's why it's probably a good idea sometimes to put in that third argument. I'll say no data. Close quotes, close parentheses, press enter, and that's there. And then maybe I'll bring this table back up here. All right. So my last example, maybe I just want to look at bringing back a couple columns, not all the columns. I don't want all these columns here. I just want a couple. Let's delete this. And I just want to bring back maybe the first two columns. So all I need to do is type equals filter, press tab, my array, select my first two columns there, and comma, uh, what, is, what, what, what do I want to include? And we're going to do this one, select column uh, D2 to D21, or equals, let's use that, press enter, and then it brings back those two columns. Right? So that's not that hard to do. If I type in female, and it'll bring back the records that just have the gender equals female. Now, if I wanted non-adjacent columns, you can see these are adjacent columns, right? The first name and last name. If I wanted non-adjacent columns, what I need to do is put it into another filter function. So I kind of have to wrap them or nest them. And so let's say, for example, I wanted only the first name, last name, and gender. So you see that this column is missing, right? So I just type in filter. So let's first bring back the records that have all the information, right? So if I clicked, uh, if I just select everything, or maybe I can just go up to, to female here, right? That just makes it a little bit easier for this example. If I click that and then comma, and then have my include equals the gender, let's make this one, select that one, equals that. And then I'll just type in uh, no data here, like I did earlier. Close parentheses, press enter. You notice that it included that third column there. And if I don't want that third column, I just wanted the first name, last name, and then the gender column, I would have to do, wrap this into another filter function and add an array. So I type in filter, open parentheses, and here, this is where I would include other values, right? And the values that I want to include are only the columns that I want. So this is column one, two, three, and four. And then in each of them, I would have to indicate whether it is true or false, basically zeros or ones. And I have to wrap them in curly brackets. So the first column I want to bring back, that's going to be a one, true. The second column, that's going to be a one, true. The third column, I don't want to bring that back, so that's going to be a zero. And then the fourth column, that's going to be a one. Close curly brackets, close parentheses, press enter. And now I only bring, I'm only bringing back those three columns. And then that is because we are referencing trues and falses in our array. So that's how we can bring back specific columns or, or non-adjacent columns. They're not adjacent to each other. So there are some examples of how we can use the new filter function, the new dynamic array filter function in a Microsoft 365. It's a pretty cool function, and you can probably use it in a lot of different ways. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.